Hello, investors and traders, and welcome to the Weekly Market Report. I'm A.J. Monty, and this is a daily candle chart of the iShares Russell 2000 Index. It's the ETF that tracks the Russell 2000. And I've zoomed in here a little bit so you can see the lines that I drew on the chart from last week. And you can see right there, this diagonal line was the forecast with the end of that line being my target and it's almost unbelievable how accurate the charts were this week and it was as though the market followed that line like a roadmap and of course that's not the case but again it shows the power behind a forecast line such as this and really all i did if you remember i took the angle of the previous downtrends and i just moved it on over to help establish a target over a five-day period, and it worked out perfectly. Now, what does that mean for next week? Well, let's take a look at this because a lot going on here. There is a 20-period moving average right there. See that blue line? And the market closed right at that moving average. And the interesting thing behind that is that we had lower highs throughout the, the week with lower lows, and the volume was increasing on the way down. That tells us that the sellers are still very motivated. In addition to that, you can see that the stochastics has crossed with a sell signal. The CCI crossed with a sell signal right there at the beginning of the week. And we are literally a hair away from that CCI crossing down below the momentum line, which is that black line down there, also known as the zero line. So in line with the forecast and keeping with that trend, I'm going to continue with the forecast lower. And this may not be the case for all the markets, but I'm going to say that the Russell is going to continue down until we test the level of support possibly down here. We have to keep an eye on the volume because when the volume starts dropping on the way down, that tells us that the seller's are losing some of that momentum. So again, keep an eye on the downside there. If you look at the Qs, take a symbol QQQ, basically representing the tech sector. Last week I talked about the role reversal and the importance of paying attention to that as we move forward. See, just to repeat a little bit about what I said, formally the moving average had acted as support. You can see here, here, a little bit of a breach there. But once that moving average was broken to the downside. The moving average then turns to resistance. And we tried really hard on Wednesday to get back up over that moving average. But guess what? It failed and moved right back down. Came within pennies of my target right here. Interesting, though, is that we are on a support level right there. And the drop in volume on the way down for the Qs tells me there might be one last attempt to try to get back up over that moving average. So I'm going to draw my forecast just like this. Monday and Tuesday, we might see a little bit of a bounce, but unfortunately, I'm seeing more of the selling activity across the board in many other tech stocks. I think next week could be the week that we break out below this support level. I'm going to even extend this beyond next week. So this is closer to a two-week forecast there. So again, Trade smart, keep your eyes on the stop loss orders below support, and make sure you're protecting your positions along the way. For the option traders, this is an absolute field day. It really is because we have spreads that will make money on both sides of the market, and it's a really successful way to trade if you learn how to trade options. So I encourage you, at least look at options. I'm not trying to tell you how to trade or what to trade, but at least look at the alternatives for investing in some of the instruments that you can incorporate into your trading. Here is the SPY. You can see the week before last, I said we'd go up. I was bullish for five days, not seven, not ten, five. And then we reversed the forecast. The end of the line right there is the target. I think that we can eventually hit that. But next week, what I think we'll see in the spider is because of that small little candle on low volume, a little bit of a rally, but not much. And then ultimately right back down. I think we're even going to go a little bit lower than what we saw as a target for this week. So I could actually get rid of that one and keep this one in force. Now moving right to the VIX. 
because for the most part the VIX is inversely related to the S&P, you can see that we pivoted down and bounced with a bullish engulfing pattern right there. You see that? So the VIX is going to be interesting next week. Will that support level hold? I think it will, but it will be the big test right there. The test of whether or not the VIX will hold support at that bullish engulfing pattern. I think because the S&P has a chance of rallying for a couple of days early in the week, the VIX could drop. But I'm going to keep that in there just like that. This is closer to a three-week forecast, mainly because if you look down at the stochastics, stochastics is crossing with a buy signal. CCI crossed with a buy signal on Wednesday. Momentum is still heading up. We have this little bit of a spinning top, which tells us there's a hesitation at that moving average. But again, I believe that that moving average will act as a very short-term resistance, but ultimately, I believe we will break out of that. Now, let's move right along to the Dow. If we take a look at the DIA, that's the Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF, you can see we moved lower, didn't hit the target yet. Dow had a little bit of a gap down while all the oscillators are moving lower. The main reason I'm thinking lower on the Dow, and I'm just going to keep this target just like that, just move it on over in the timeline, I think that the increase in volume on the way down for the Dow is that telltale sign that the sellers are still motivated. I was on a conference call earlier, talked about the massive sell-off in the last 15 minutes of the day. Look at that. We dropped 150 points from here to here on the Dow in 15 minutes. And so that tells me that there weren't too many people willing to hold the long position over the weekend. So we have to keep an eye on that. Again, CCI crossing with a sell signal. We still have a fairly wide divergence from this 20 period moving average. And this role reversal, again, remember, burn that into your memory. Former resistance broken right there turns to support and this support level this horizontal support level matches perfectly with this 20 period moving average so we'll have to see whether or not that holds as a support level moving forward and if it doesn't what could we expect something like that so again risk management is very much in order here don't marry your positions because you love the product, the service, or the company, or the CEO of the company. It doesn't matter. You have to really pay very close attention to what's going on right there. Now, I've been talking a lot with our clients about silver. I want to show you something that I find even more interesting than the general markets, and that is COMEX and what's happening over there this morning. That's Friday the 19th at 9.40 a.m. This article was published I will be putting a link to this article in the description box below, so make sure you get a good read on that. But what really happened here on COMEX, this really popped out at me. If you look at silver delivery, this is a simple graph of what happened in March 2021 here. The futures traders are starting to take delivery of the spot month. And the number of deliveries... For this year, as compared to previous years, is more than double what we've seen in the past. What does that mean? It means the short squeeze is in the works for silver. Another interesting thing that you'll find in this article is that Comex only has about a year's worth of inventory supply to make those deliveries. And that is assuming that the delivery cycle stays the way it is on a regular schedule, a regular pace. But if all of a sudden there's a ramp up of deliveries being made or deliveries being taken, you can look at it that way, then that supply could run out more quickly than anyone may imagine. So keep an eye on the silver market, keep an eye on the charts, keep an eye on your downside, make sure you're using good risk management principles and stay in touch with this weekly market report. We'll talk to you next week. So long.